Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the Anvil MBT podcast. Uh, how do you do in ship? How are you? Hey, how are you doing? All right, all right. Good to see you. Likewise. Uh, so I was just now uh, giving us our little intros and welcoming everyone to the show tonight. Uh, I already said I am Mr. Q, and we have with us as well our lovely co-hostess. Chef T. Hello, everybody. There you are. And how was your week this week, sister? Um, Hectic. Hectic. Um, you started a new job, you said. So that was, that's good. Yeah. Other than that, I've been chilling. How about you? Uh... Ups and downs, ups and downs throughout this week. One moment, I'm just. Uh, okay, here we are. Ups and downs throughout the course of the week, sister. Um, lots going on in my life. Uh, this separation issue with my wife is, you know, something that uh, does, uh, requires a lot of attention mm-hmm. and a lot of uh, consideration and prayer. Mm-hmm. So I have that going on. Uh, and trying to keep my other businesses afloat and going, bar uh, stealing from Peter to pay Paul, you know, it catches up with you for after a while. So you just gotta, you know, s- kind of slow down things and regroup and make sure that you're giving uh, things their proper attention and putting the, and prioritizing them. You know, so, for sure. Yeah, that's what this week has been about uh, for me. A lot of great developments, though. A lot of cool things are happening. I mean, uh, a lot of this podcast is getting some attention, which I'm really happy about. Uh, We are getting some attention. And uh, so that makes me feel good. Uh, Plum Queen. I was chatting with her earlier. Yeah, I was chatting with her earlier today. And she made a comment. She says, oh, you know, Mr. Q, uh, people have been going and looking at my interview on, on, on you guys show and they really like what you guys are doing. So it, that makes us feel, I know it makes me feel good, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Never would have thought, you know? Yeah. I tell you, I tell you. And <laughs> so last week, uh, and it's okay. It is what it is, man. I know I kind of went off on different tangents and I'm glad that we had the opportunity to chat and connect briefly afterwards. Yes. Uh, about the show. And what I really appreciated was, okay, we knew that we were going to do a part two to our relationship segment. And I will make some comments about that. Okay. And I'm so glad that you came up with the concept or the idea of us talking about self-love. Okay. Yes. So I've yes. done some research and I got some points uh, that I want to, that I want to bring up. But is there anything you want to talk about before we dive into this this topic? No, let's get right into it. Let's go. So, well, you brought it up. (laughs) What what do you want to say? Um. All right. Well, basically, when we when we're talking about relationships this whole month, I figured like the the most important relationship to have is one with yourself. Um, we tend to put so much effort into relationships with friends, co-workers, um, our immediate families, but we don't tend to hone that uh, attention to ourselves. Um, we're the only person who knows ourselves the best, so why not spend as much time as you can with yourself? Um, I noticed that when I spend more time with myself, I learn more and more every day, and with that comes growth. And I know with growth, it scares some people because you do tend to lose um, a lot of friends or a lot of associates or even family members when you start to really enter who you are or you come along with yourself. So I, was, I always tell people, like, it's okay to be alone. Like it's okay to, to go out to eat by yourself or it's okay to go watch a movie by yourself or it's okay to spend the weekend at home by yourself. A lot of people have attachment issues, I, I, I think that's what it is, mm-hmm. or dependent issues. And once again, to our episode, it reached down to the beginning, to your childhood, to 
how you were raised, your traumas, and all that, all put together in, in one. And I feel like people can't stand to be with themselves or with their own personal thoughts. But like I said, loving yourself is priority in life. You can love yourself, you can love everybody. But if you don't love mm-hmm. yourself, well, you can have the energy or, or even the time or the just even any kind of love to give anybody if you don't give it for you, give it to yourself. You know what I mean? I dig it. I dig it. Um, I'm going through an interesting time, as I was saying. And so it gives you an opportunity to uh, take that time to mentally reflect. And sometimes, you know, I think in our lives, we can, you know, especially with social media and looking at the Instagrams and the TikToks, and we look around and we see all these people apparently uh, appearing to be beautiful and successful and in dynamic relationships and they're traveling and they look like money is not an expense and stuff. Hello? You there, Miss Q? Look like we're having a glitch, guys. One moment. Dream. I'm sure that chef. Okay, here's chef. Chef will be back. I'm sure. Uh, as I was saying, oh, actually, let me send her a Facebook message to tell her. And of course, I'm not here. one moment, guys. Just gonna tell chef I'm back on the air. Okay. Oh, there she is. Okay, there you are, Chef. Okay. There we are. Okay. Yeah, we just got cut off there for a second. Uh, So so what I was saying is that, you know, you look at these people, these people can be in your neighborhood, uh, you know, or on media, and you're like, man, well, how they get so damn happy, man? How come it looks like they got everything they wanted? And and so when you, when I find myself looking at, at things like that. I do like to go outside of myself and try to gather information and perspectives that I may not have. Now, one thing that I'll say about something that you said, you say, okay, when you get into yourself, you know, who knows you better than you? Okay. I don't know about that sister because, and this is one thing I want to talk about in our community, mental health issues in the black community. There are instances where you may not have the tools to help yourself and you may not be able to define what is going on and what needs to be addressed within you. So I always want to encourage people that if you find yourself in that predicament where you've taken time, you've gone inside and you're still not really, you know, making those breakthroughs that you want, there's no shame and harm. And in fact, I think it'd probably be very beneficial to go out and seek other advice and input, professional. Oh, absolutely. I've, yeah. I've been in therapy. I've done therapy. Yeah. Oh, you do that now? You know, I'm about to start doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm about to start it's, doing it's that. It's very helpful because, like you said, to have an outside source that, that doesn't hold judgment, doesn't know you from Adam, 
to give you an insight that you need desperately, yeah, for sure. I do you still do that or no, I haven't gone to therapy in years, but in years, okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna check check that out. I think I'm gonna do that a little bit. Uh so I said all that to say, yeah, I came up with about uh, 10 or 13 steps that seem to be consistent in the articles that I was reading about how people, things that people can do to engage in the process of loving yourself more. Okay. So I thought maybe I could, conversations could maybe bounce off a couple of these points. So I'll just go look at the first one. Stop comparing yourself to others. We're socialized to be competitive. So comparing ourselves to others is natural, but it can be dangerous. There's no, uh, there's just no point in comparing yourself to anyone else on the planet because there's only one you. Focus on yourself and your journey. The shift of energy alone will help you feel free. Chef, what do you, what do you think about that? I absolutely agree. Um, I used to have that issue. <laughs> I used to always compare my situation to others, um, not really like, realizing that like, my, like you just said, my journey is my journey and their journey is their journey. Mm -hmm. When my life is on pause, it's on pause for a reason. And while it's on play, it's on play for a reason. So I had to like, I, I had to come to terms with that um, many years ago. It took me, it took me a while to, I used to compare my, my life or my situation to others all the time. But I do agree, mm. like, you shouldn't focus on the outside and everyone else. Spend all that energy on you. Right. And your, I do agree with that. Your journey, for sure. Yeah. Now, I but do think, further. yeah, now, I, and, and, you know, and I have issues with this statement. I can dig this statement and I agree with it for the most part. I think that a certain amount of looking to see what the next guy is doing with, uh, uh, in this race of life, quote unquote, is healthy because I think that I think that's healthy. I think that a little bit of that is okay. I think that it's good to kind of look at your life and say, well, man, I see a lot of my peers have done this or have this in their life. Doesn't mean that you're a bad person because you ain't got those things, but there are benchmarks that maybe should be considered, but maybe that's an old fashioned way of thinking. What I've been learning about this new generation is that everybody is kind of, well, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing my thing. YOLO, YOLO, whatever that is. You, you only live once, the thing. And I'm living my best life. Okay, I, I see, I see. And I don't know how that's going to turn out. In my I'm generation, there was a certain amount of, yeah, I want to look at this motherfucker because, yeah, if he can do it, then I should be able to do it too. And, and if I'm not doing it, why aren't I doing it? And I want to know that answer. Maybe it ain't for me to do. Maybe that ain't my path. But I'm going to ask that question. That's just me. I feel like it's okay to ask that question, but just take it as motivation, not necessarily as... Don't let it... Someone. Yeah. Become you or a part, right. a part of, of, of your journey. Like, um, And like you said, like you, it might be an old way of thinking. And like you said, it's not that we want... It's YOLO or living our best life. I feel like we've been in doctrine for so many years of our lives. We're finally doing what we want to do to that makes us happy. So many people are doing what makes them happy now. And I, I think that's throwing people because <laughs> they're so used to doing shit by in order one, two, three, four. No, like people are doing shit that makes them happy. And I I commend people for that because for so long you, you can do something for so many years and be so unhappy. And as yeah, soon as you do something that you love or that you enjoy doing, your whole world turns upside down. And I you're agree. And you're a better person. So I think it's a what lot you're of putting that energy into, like that statement was saying, yeah. Correct. What you're saying, sister? No, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was just saying what you're saying is about, like that statement, you're going to reap the benefits of what you put your energy into. So if you're putting your energy into putting yourself down and whatever, then that's what you're going to get. Everything exactly. to reinforce that belief, right? Magnet, you're a magnet to your thoughts, you're a magnet to everything, for sure. Yeah. Okay, here, here's another one, let's see. Don't worry about others' opinions. In that same vein, don't worry about what society thinks or expects of you. 
You can't make everyone happy. So this is a waste of time and it will only slow you down on your journey to being the best you. Yeah, I think I've, I think I still stand behind that statement. Don't worry about the opinions of us. Well, see, you know, sister, I don't know, man. <laughs> Some of that shit, no, you should worry about the fucking opinions of others. Because if you're a fucked up mom, another mom tell, hey, man, look at the way she treat her kids and she leave them behind. And she don't be cleaning them kids. You should be fucking worried about the opinions of others. So I don't, I can't get with that philosophy in this new time. I was raised to care what motherfuckers think about you. Why? Because you represent this family every time you go out the door. And so just because it makes you happy, don't be going out here being a dumbass and making our family look bad. That don't make it might make you happy, but uh, look at the long term effects of that happiness and some and everything that you think is making you happy. All that shit ain't put you ain't supposed to be doing. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? And I just don't trust people. That's what I think it might be. Exactly. Trust. It comes down to trust. I just had that thought. That's funny. I just had this thought today while sitting in my car and I I'm telling people about our podcast, you know, I'm very yeah. excited and I'm very and they're interested. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna give you information. And there's a lot of things I like to do behind the scenes that I wouldn't do, you know, normally. And I had to think about it, like, no, you're inviting these people to watch you. So be careful, you know, what you say or do. And I and there this comes where the opinion of others matters sometimes, especially when you're trying to do big things in life. You know what I mean? So it, it's a time and a place. Yeah, it's a time so, and a place. You're right. And that, and that's the thing. And, and I'm so glad you said that, sister, because I think I hit a benchmark today. Ooh. I was in one of the theater groups on Facebook. Right. And I got an invite uh, for specifically professional people of color in the theater world. Okay. People that earn their living doing theater. And I'm in the group and I got this invitation to come down to Mexico and do a clown workshop and a dancing workshop. I was looking at it. I went to the site and I looked through it. I see who's sponsoring. I see the activities. And he said, well, what are you going to think about this, Mr. K? I said, man, this is a bunch of waste of bullshit. This is a bullshit. Be there. He said, what? what the fuck? I said, now I write that shit on Facebook too. He said, what you, why do you say that? Oh, sister, they came after me. How you I said, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. And this is just how I feel, man. I've been doing theater since I was eight years old. I said, there's a difference between an actor and a theater fag. You guys are a bunch of theater fags. And I ain't never liked no theater fags. Now, this is where I got banned. I said, see, you are thinking that fag, I mean, uh, a dainty, lighty guy. No, 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 no. I mean a fucker that's just because you fat, was effeminate, and couldn't get along with the other boys, you decide to go in the theater. That don't make you no fucking actor, bro. That don't make you no actor. I'm an actor. I'm an artist that has studied my shit. So I ain't got no time to be acting like no fucking clown and dancing. I'm a 51-year-old man. I said, y'all, but y'all, y'all playing at this shit, bro. I said, if you really want to offer actors an opportunity to express themselves and grow, where's your how to produce a, a one man show? Where's your how to put a production together from scratch? That's what these people need. What you're giving them is just filling your pockets. I ain't mad at you, but don't come to me with that shit, bro. That's uncool. I'm offended. And then some, well, you know, um, I've studied clowning and it. I said, listen, most of you motherfuckers are probably unemployed and you probably aren't very good. That's for you to decide. You can go and look at my fucking resume and you cannot ask any actor I've worked with. No, um, Q ain't like that. He, he just believes in doing the fucking work. I've already done all that shit. <laughs> you do that before you even get on the stage, man. I said, so what you're doing is you putting these people and you trying to sell something to them. I dig it, man, but I'm not that guy. And so don't come to me like that. Oh, okay. I, I kind of see what you're saying. I said, yeah, you know, if you want to offer some shit where people going to walk away and say, yeah, I can go get a job with this information. I dig it, man. I'm, I'm with you. But this baiting and switching shit, man, I just don't trust y'all. I don't trust you now. That's how I feel. Now, how I relate that to people. I don't trust people to know themselves. 
Why not? Because most of the people that I've interacted with don't. And they haven't even done the basic homework to get there. And it's evident by their life's condition and the things that they say. It's evident by the perspective of the world that they hold and that they espouse. That's what has been my experience. Most okay, people are so a dogma that they have not challenged throughout their life, are afraid to break out of it and think differently, do something new, even if it fails, to say, well, okay, I experienced that. How does that reinforce my perspective on the world? Most people are cowards, Bo. Most people are cowards, which is why the world is the condition at this end. People afraid to live the life that they want. That's what I think. Is it that they're afraid or is it that they don't have the means to? There's nothing stopping you. There is no such thing as not having the means. I was talking with a woman today and I was asking her about this project that she's doing. And I just listen, you know, listening. Well, I don't have this and I don't have that and I don't have this. Mm -hmm. And then earlier, it just so happened, I was talking to a celebrity guy, very successful guy. That motherfucker is working on a new thing. He never says what I, he doesn't have. He, he, no, that's not true. He'll say, oh, I understand that, you know, this would be great to have. And is, we don't have that. But fuck it. You go on. That's how that's you know. How real, that's how you know a real artist. You see, when you I see, was, uh, uh, oh, hold on, oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh. I mean, why is that? Why is that go echo? Oh. Is that better? Is that better? Mm. Check. Check. I think that just happened. Can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me clearly? I can. Okay. okay. Um, um, in college, in when college, I, was, uh, when I told my parents, parents and stuff, and stuff that I was and and they say, "Okay, they well, say, okay, okay, well, you're not going to pay for it." Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. That's how bad I am. I didn't give a I fuck give a what my grandma said. Grandma did. I, 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 I didn't give a fuck. I didn't give a fuck, didn't give a fuck what, my give a fuck what my, my mother said, said, what my grandmother said. said. Nobody oh, said I, I wanted to be an actor. Nothing, nothing else, else in the church. And it took and them, took them three, four three, four years to get caught up to it. But you thought I called my grandma? I did it myself. I did it myself. And only and years, years later, later my, my relatives, relatives come to me and say, man, man, we love you so, so, much so much because you did what you, you wanted for better, for better or for worse. Or for worse. Now, it just so happens to work out. And I'm very and I'm grateful and very honored. And honored. But, but like I was telling like my was wife one time, and I was asking her, like, you know, being a model and stuff. I said, yeah, you know, why, why, why did you have these uh, interruptions in your career? Oh, well, you know, I have a girlfriend. I mean, a boyfriend. Or, or uh, my grandmother or mother didn't bid me going to modeling. And I didn't want to travel there because my, you know, my parents didn't. I said, oh, I, I dig it. That's, that's your journey. I dig that. Yeah, nothing like that ever stopped me. I don't give a fuck. I want to be an actor. And even today, when I'm on the phone with people, sister, the things that I know we live in the real world, okay? And I hate that. But your reality is kind of what you make it. I know that, you know. Just do what the fuck you want to do, bro. But that was a form of self love when you, when you, that was a form of self love when you did what That's right. That's right. When you wanted to do acting. Right. And right. I'm and I was telling what I was communicating is that I love y'all, but I don't love y'all more than I love me. And I don't believe in y'all more than I believe in me. So fuck y'all. And you're gonna love me or not. 
It's cool. It's cool. I'll live. I'll live. Not and in then, those words, then, everybody, but you guys get the gist. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you have to branch off from what you know right, in order right. to love yourself better. Because, because and my mother would, would tell me this when I'm in my 40s. Son, what I Son, realized, realized is that I was scared. I, was scared. I think in my I, think I knew you were scared. scared. I just didn't know how to communicate that knowledge and understanding. But I wasn't going to let your fear of who you are or your limitations affect who the fuck I think I am. And I know you love me. So if you're capable of that, imagine a motherfucker that don't even know me. And I'm going to let what they think affect me and just make me decide on what journey I'm going to take. Fuck that. No, I ain't never been that way. Mm-mm. Nope. I don't even know what that looks like. I'm be honest with you. I'll tell you this, though. My wife is my the only wife person in my life whom I have really not done things that maybe I wanted to do, considering the feelings and thoughts of another. Okay. Yeah, my, my okay. wife is the only person really in my life that I've done that for. But doing that with her, I've learned how to do it more. You dig what I mean? How to give altruistically. That's what the problem is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was yeah, a foreign concept, concept to me for many years. For many years. I didn't understand it. I thought, oh, if you give something, 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 then you're going to get something, something reciprocal. reciprocal. My wife My explained wife to me, oh, no, see, that's not that's true, true giving. giving. That means you're giving with the expectation of getting something in return, so you're not giving from your heart. I said, oh, yeah, I guess I don't give from my heart. Yeah, I give with the expectation you're going to give me something back. Maybe not tomorrow, but next week. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how you yeah, should Dang, man. <laughs> is that crazy? Is that crazy? <laughs> I mean, uh, I wouldn't uh, say it's crazy because I'm sure a lot of other people are the same way, but that's that. Damn, like, damn. Like, damn. Like, that's all I can say. Like, you really you really expect something back every time you give, or you know what I mean? Like, well, I know that the, re- I know that the that universe rewards you, rewards you for your gifts of giving from the heart. The heart. Right. Yeah, I yeah. know that. Or like you don't give just because like one day you wake up like damn I'm in a I'm in a giving spirit I'm gonna oh now I do yeah now I do absolutely absolutely. yeah absolutely absolutely. I give people food and clothes and you know anything I got money I don't care you know because I've always felt that way but my intention behind it was not the same you know what I mean I hear you. Yeah, yeah, my intention yeah. behind my giving is totally different than what it used to be. Okay. Yeah, I can now yeah, give and not expect anything back, and I don't expect anything back. In fact, I understand how I'm rewarded through giving. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let me catch up. Yeah, you say what? Before we go on to the next one. Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Do you feel like forgiving others for wronging you or treating you a certain kind of way is a form of self love? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And why because through, for, through forgiveness, forgiveness, you lift you the lift weight, weight off of you. That's why I'm you know, conceptualizing that's 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 So when I forgive so when I someone for how they may have treated me or something, that they, something they said to me, me I'm giving that I'm gift to myself, myself to say, to it's, say okay. it's okay. And it doesn't and affect it doesn't you, except for as much as you allow it to. And so then and that's so my homework. Why is it affecting you? What did they say or do that pissed you off? Why do you feel offended or, or you know, uh, put off or whatever? And use that and self-reflect on it. Now, there are some instances when you're going to go there and you're going to say, oh, yeah, that person is just an asshole. That's cool. That's cool. Because some people are assholes. I can be an asshole. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, he was in an asshole moment. And I forgive him because I know I can be an asshole. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why, that's like, like, when I, when you when talk I, when with you people talk and argue, like, I, like I, it's, it's, funny, it's to funny to me. It's funny to me. Um, um, in family, in family, it's so weird to me that a family can they can argue and bicker and not talk to know about each other. I don't get that. Why don't you get that? <laughs> because. <laughs> I've always envisioned that family is just this a unit, a unit that you get through it no matter what. Okay. And that at the 
center of it, center there's, of a, it, love there's a love that is unbreakable, that is unbreakable and, and, you know, you know opinions, opinions can affect it too much. It, too much. it can stretch it. It, stretch it. it, can, it can morph it into something into different, different, but it's still it's there. Still but I was talking well, to a girl today. She said, Mr. Q, I live in the, live same, in the same apartment, apartment complex, complex as my two, as sisters, my two sisters, sisters, and we ain't talked in years. I said, why is that, sister? She said, oh, because, you know, we grew up and certain things just didn't get healed. And now we can't even talk to each other. I'm like, oh, my like, oh, least. I said, sister, go and call your sister right now. I'm not going to do her. Nope. Nope. Okay. It's okay. I'm biased. I'm biased. Tell me what your experience is. Um, <laughs> I'm biased. Um, with my immediate family, oh, for sure. I'm rather dying. Um, there's uh -huh. no, there's nothing that will ever break me apart from them. Right. None of that. No argument. No nothing will ever break right. Apart right. My immediate family, but. Extend it? Oh, fuck no. <laughs> right. You're, 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 and I do see that difference. Yeah, no. I'm yeah, I agree. yeah, I agree. I'm good. I see that difference. See that difference. Because your nuclear because family, family, I think that's yeah, what you're talking about, right? Your mom, your brother, right? Of course. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Your you foundation. Know, you know, <laughs> right, right. I was, I was talking, talking with, with uh, uh, my wife one my wife very recently. Very recently. And, and we it had come we up before, before, and I think I kind of alluded to it last week. Last week. As, a As a single child growing child, up, you know, with no siblings, I'm, I'm very emotionally self-reliant, self you know? You know? Whereas, Whereas perhaps, perhaps, when one is when raised, when one is raised with siblings, siblings around them, them they're used to they're that. Used to that Effect, effect of, inter of, inter of interacting with someone kind of constantly. I see, I never had that growing up. My wife thinks that that has just definitely affected my ability to communicate and share because I can go in, inside and I'm probably happy and content. And also, I was working at an early age, so I was around a lot of adults, adults and I'd be the only kid there. So, so that, that has something has to do with it. We're sure we're just going to know exactly what's right. Which is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm okay, okay with it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty babe. Happy. I don't know. Just, yeah, but that doesn't make you really maybe a good me. Maybe that's what we got to talk about. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll go to the next I'll go to the next one. Oh, this is, oh, I'm good at this one. Allow yourself to make mistakes. We're told again and again from a young age, nobody's perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. But the older you get, the more pressure you feel never to fail. Cut yourself some slack. Make mistakes so you can learn and grow from them. Embrace your past. You're constantly You're changing constantly and growing changing from who you once were once into who you into are today and who you and will who one day be. Day. So forget so about the voice about in your head that says you need to be perfect. perfect. Make, mistakes. Make mistakes. Lots of them. Lots of them. The lessons the lesson you'll, you'll gain are priceless. Are priceless. Thoughts. Thoughts. Um, I believe that that's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wish I didn't have to learn these lessons over and over again, but I guess that's just how my journey goes. But yeah, um, yeah, I agree. It, yeah, I think I, 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 I stand by that. I want to talk real quick. Yeah. When we were talking, we were talking about, about the opinions, the opinions of, others. of others. Yes. And there's and a woman in town, in town you know, and, you know, and I was telling you a few weeks about how that woman was blessed. She was telling me everything with a child of God, and then had the nerve to call me her damn it. And then I said, well, you just said to me, that's the most offensive one you said. Anyway, she's a Christian. She's a Christian. Yes. And then it's like on one hand, I think the philosophy, well, you can let them live their life and don't touch them, you know, I hear you. But a part of me, that just might be the petty part of me, just wants to say, okay, 
you were wrong. You were wrong. Do you acknowledge you that now? And then I know that you, you can't expect you can't people to stand on your turn. Uh, but I got an opinion got about that lady, and I'd like to share it with her, man. <laughs> but then as a man, you kind of like say, okay, you know, I'm a guy, and that's a woman. Uh, let it be. Share it with her in private. I'm sure you'll see her again, correct? I'm, I guess I will. Yeah. I was thinking about going to her church. And, and you know, being you there know, and being there. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. And and one thing and also, also chess. I said I that's said that last song, but I'm going to be much, much more conscientious of that. So we're at 35 minutes. We just can go through a couple more now. Okay. Don't be afraid. I think you know this because you talk to me about this. Don't be afraid to let me talk. One more time. I didn't catch that. Don't be afraid to let go of toxic people. Oh, I'm quick. I'm quick at doing that. How do you identify toxic people? <laughs> Anything that disturbs my peace and my energy. Anything that causes me to deter from my goals and my dreams. Anything that causes harm to me and my body and my health. Anything that is not good for me, I will cut that shit off in a heartbeat. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Period. What if you love them? Love them. Give a fuck. You didn't love me enough. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You didn't love I me agree. enough. And I love hard. So right. hell right. no. Nah. Right. I'm good. I agree, sister. I agree, sister. I agree. And I'm getting better I'm getting at that. Better. Me? me? I'm a soft. I'm a soft. So I'll, so I'll kind of nurse you. You're, you're right. right. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I'm learning that. Learning at 50 it. years old, I have to learn that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I did that. I did. What did I write? Did Nobody I write? ever takes Nobody responsibility. Oh, yeah, I love this. Yeah, I love this. For the energy they put, in, they put out they put into the out world. world. If there's someone if there's who's bringing toxicity into your life and they won't take responsibility for it, that might mean you need to step away from them. Don't be afraid Don't to, be do, afraid this. to do this. It's liberating, it's liberating and, important, and important, even though even it though may it be painful. Hurts, yeah. Remember, Remember, protect, protect your, your energy. energy. It's not it's rude not or wrong, wrong to remove to yourself from yourself situations, situations or the company of people, people who are draining you. you. Amen. Amen. Emotional, Emotional vampires. vampires. I love that term. Yes. They just sat. And that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons why, why I kind of sometimes, sometimes stay out those rooms. I okay. see in I my see own pain, pain, and I'm not trying to take away from the pain of others. Pain of others. Mm-hmm. I, I sense a lot of emotion, emotional, emotional vampires. vampires. In those chats? Yep. Yep. Okay. In those in those Facebook, Facebook rooms, rooms with the amputees with the and the disabled. disabled. Okay. I, 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 a lot of those... A lot of those more posts more than what I really than I, than I care than for. I sense I draining. They just want the attention. They just want, they just want, they just want you know, you know. Always, always got a problem, got a never a solution. solution. Never a solution. I can't stand people like that. Me either. Me either. Man. Now, now, I, I, in my own personal my relationship, relationship. Okay, it's just got to come out, man, because man. fuck, that's my <laughs> life. Okay, so that's the way it is. I was <laughs> What's up, Mr. Q? What's hey, up? man, I, I just let it go, yo, and I'll tell you how it is. So I told my, have told my wife, listen, don't come to me with a whole bunch of fucking problems. You come to me with solutions. I got the world problems I got to deal with. So shit in this household, identify it. This is what needs to be done. Husband, this is where we are. This is what needs to be done. Okay. Don't come to me with a whole bunch of problems. Come to me with solutions. Now, I understand that women have to express themselves and they have to have a uh, environment to where they are allowed to express themselves and release what's going through them. I dig that. But yeah, I don't want to be hearing that shit all day. I tell my wife, yeah, I tell you. No, you don't know. You got about 15 minutes of that. And then we got to get to work. You are an asshole. Pete, why? Because this is what happens, sister. This is what happens. You let you let give people that, you give people that time, they'll fucking no. all no. night long. You be talking about that same shit. Nope. Let's no. put a kibosh on this. 
Let's say, let's say 30 minutes, 45 minutes, we just bitch and moan, and that's it. Cool, I quit there. But at 40 minutes, 46, that shit is. And then we get back to work. Okay. That's just I mean, how that's I am. Fair. And that's, that's not good, right? That's, that's, that's good. I just think that's how I am. That's fair. Because yeah, I, I was going to hear that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to hear that. This went wrong. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, what is the solution, yo? What the fuck? Okay, here we go. But I'm learning. I'm being more patient. I'm learning that, you know, in my business dealings, I'm being more patient. Okay. And I don't, I'm not comfortable with it always, but I'm trying to, you know, soak it in. And I'm also exercising, okay. Okay. So if I have this business thing going on, what can I do that doesn't interrupt what I have going on in this business thing? What can I do to make me see? I have to always feel like I'm making a move, that I'm advancing. I've taken a step. I've made an accomplishment today to get me closer to my goal. I got to have something tangible. I can't just, can't just be no fucking talk. I got to have, this is what I did today. Look. Oh, wow. Cool. Another step. I'm just like that. But my buddy is saying, hey, man, just kind of relax. It's good. I'm like, mm, I hear you. Okay, I'll be patient. But I'm also going to be doing this too, bro. That's the sign. Okay, trust yourself to make good decisions for yourself. Okay, that, that's important. Trust yourself to make good decisions for yourself. We so often doubt ourselves and our ability to do what's right, when most of the time we do know in our hearts what's best. I, just, I don't think that's true. Remember that your feelings are valid. You're not losing touch with reality. You know yourself better than anyone else. So be your best advocate. But I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that. Because I work with special ed kids. You ain't going to tell me them fucking kids know themselves better than we do. That's not true. That's not, just not true. You're talking about... It's not scientifically true. But you're talking about a disabled child. They're talking about an average fucking human being, an average adult. You know that. Okay. 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 So, okay, so, okay, so let's just deal with that. Would you Would agree you or disagree that most people, most people in the United in States, States probably, probably function, function with, with, I'm going to say, 40% fucking craziness. fucking craziness? And they're just walking around, normal people. But they got some crazy fucking ideas in their head. About how life, about how this world is, how the world should be. Maybe they should have sex with children, they think, and they think that shit's right. So when we talking about you know yourself better than anyone else, I hear you. But you might be a crazy motherfucker, too. How you know? I feel like crazy people know themselves, too, though. Like he, like you just said, a pedophile knows that he's a fucking pedophile or she's a But he don't know that it's wrong. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I don't know about that, sister. I've read some of those people. They don't think that it's wrong. They're trying to get that shit in the law, sister. Yeah, they're trying to take it out of the law books as a, as a crime. Yeah, I, I, I read that. You heard about that? So that's me. They think, and, and, and I'm not trying to equate the two, okay? I'm only saying for historical reference. Those people, the pedophiles, are saying, well, it's just like uh, gay people. Remember they used to put us in the um, uh, the gay people in the uh, book saying that we're crazy? They said, y'all put the gay people out. We want to come out the book, too. We ain't crazy. We know what the fuck we want. We want little kids. They say they know themselves, though. What do you think about a person who tells you that they're they, uh, a supremacist? Whether it be a black supremacist or a white supremacist? Well, they say they know themselves. So 
So that's why that, that idea of don't judge others. Uh, you know yourself better than anybody. Mm, I hear you. I don't think I agree with that for the most part. I don't think I agree with it. I think because people too fucking crazy in our country. I can't trust you until I can see your life demonstrate that you ain't no crazy motherfucker. And that don't mean that you rich or nothing like that. That don't mean nothing. It means, oh, I see how you relate to people and talk. That doesn't mean anything. To anger. I, that doesn't mean anything. The sweetest what do you mean? person, you the sweetest person, could be a goddamn serial killer, and you wouldn't know it That's because true. you That's you true. believe her to be this this innocent woman because how she spoke to you. How mm -hmm. she dressed, how she interacts with people, just because that shit don't mean anything. That's just a shell. Mm -hmm. I think that. But I feel like you do. You should. We trust ourselves enough to know what we will and will not do, and what we're capable of and what we're not capable of. But you should just trust yourself to know what you're gonna like. What you what you already know you're gonna what you're already know you're gonna do, or what you're capable of doing. Trust yourself to to, or just trust people enough, like you said. You want to see what, what people their actions. Trust them enough from how from what you already seen. So I right. trust you to do this, this, and that from what I've seen right. you do already. Right. Don't trust them anymore, or don't give them any. Uh -huh. Oh, I can't see. Yeah. See, I think that's my, one of my things. I give people a lot of leeway. Yeah, I just make I just assumptions, and I have to stop doing it. Yeah. 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 I've been told yeah. that many yeah. times. Right. Right. For sure. Okay, we'll okay, do this we'll last do this one, and then we'll come back and visit next week. Take every, every opportunity. Oh, this is good. Take every opportunity you like presents, or create your own. own. Take every Take opportunity every that life gives you, and if it ain't giving you none, create your own. That's been my philosophy. I like that. The timing the time is never is going to be perfect for that next, for that big, next step big step in your step life. Your life. Uh, uh, let me see here. Let me see here. The setup, the setup may not may be, ideal, be ideal, but that shouldn't but hold that you should back, back from reaching to meet your goals, goals and dreams. And dream. Instead, Instead, seize the moment, seize the moment because, it because it may never may come, back. come back. Hey, I agree. That I, agree. I seized I the agree. moment um, when I went to college for culinary arts. That was my that was my opportunity right there. But the situation was by far not ideal. It started off ideal, you know, mm -hmm. but then. Shit happens, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but through it all, I, I persevered and I graduated with honors yeah. and everything. Yeah. So, all right. all right. What? What's that? What's you graduated? What? From culinary arts, the cordon bleu. Right, right. The right. cordon bleu. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to be you using that more? For sure, I tried. I mean, I mean it's tough. It's I know. Tough. Oh, well, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta go down to that <laughs> restaurant and cook, chef. Certain place down there, all them fancy folks be at down here. Where? Uh, uh, the, over there by, uh, before you get to the National Park entrance. That restaurant or something over there. My wife gone there and eat. I ain't never ate there. And it's got little rooms on the property, too. It's near the art gallery over there on that side of town. It's in the desert. Oh, well, I know that place. Oh, that, I know that place. Yeah. I know those guys. Huh? Uh, it's a different place? It's a different it's place. I wish I could tell I you. I'll look it up and I'll send you the thing. But, oh, shit. Kitchen of the Desert, sister. A brother owns that, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just put that out there. Okay. Um, okay. This, that, that was our last one. Take every opportunity. Yeah. Take every opportunity, guys. And then if they don't exist, create your own. I was telling you. Uh, clean uh, this clean uh, uh, morning. morning. I went to the banker system. Banker that's what I called her. Okay. I thanked her because I, I said, Oh, so I, I just want to let you know I see all of the postings that you do throughout the day on the social media, and it, it's really inspiring me to get more pictures, you know, and just constantly doing my shit. I said, Thank you for that inspiration. You're showing me, Oh, I need to be doing that more, and I ain't doing it. He said, yeah, Mrs. you do that shit. I said, okay, sister, I'm making up. You know, I'm making up. I'm, I'm, it's in my thing now. It's in my purview. I'm a, you definitely going to start seeing more people. I said, I said, see, me, I got to change the way I think. Show business is different. And 
Now I understand. Yeah, it's totally cool for me to just take selfies of my shit. <laughs> I'm not from that school. I'm from the school where you get a photographer, you get the lights set up, you book a place, and you take your pictures. It ain't that way no more. Yeah, it's not that serious. Yeah, yeah it's not that serious. Yeah. yeah. I was telling you how I, I contacted you the other night because I had this audition for a telecommunications company, right? Right. And I actually wound up not doing the audition. Right, you told me. Yeah, they wanted uh, the full body oh, shots, et cetera, et cetera, but it had to be from today, you know, today. yesterday. Now, now this is this what I learned what I or experience. experience. Okay. Normally when I'm doing these things, I have a health photographer. My wife, that's her thing. That's why she, she takes pictures. Not having my wife here, I literally, when I got when the audition I, notice from my agent, I, said, oh, okay, yeah, I'll get out of Alzora to take these pictures for me. I said, oh, wait, Alzora's not here now. Okay, well, okay. let me see who else would, would I trust to fucking take some pictures of me that ain't gonna fuck it up. So I called you. <laughs> and I called you and you just couldn't do it, and that's fine. And so I just told my agent, all right, next one up, next one up, next one. But that kind of sucks. My ass. That kind of bit my ass. That that's the first because I don't turn down auditions. I will go for anything almost. But I turned it down. I said, okay. You couldn't. You, could, you couldn't set up your phone. I know. I didn't know. You could get a full body picture of you, Mr. Q. How? Well, now this is what I did, sister. Hold on. Where is that? Oh, it's over there. When you come back over here. I'll show you. I'll I got the uh, stand. I just don't want to leave the water. It's a stand with the round light on it. Yeah. I got it today. You put the phone in it, and then I got a little remote that came with it, and I can take my picture that way. And I can even start my video. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. right. Okay. So I said, oh, I will never find myself in that position again. So today I went out and got that fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. So that's okay. That. okay. So we're going to take so these opportunities, these guys. We've been going almost an hour. We'll kind of we'll pick, kind up pick up the the, the rest of these the points, points in the first in the half, half of next week's show. Week show. What I'm really what I'm hoping for, Chef, for is Chef, that we have Chef, a couple of contestants that want to help us end up Black History Month with some of these damn questions I got. I got to take that. Yeah. Interested? What's going on, guys? No one. Well, we had a couple of people interested. I wrote them back and says, okay, it's on the 23rd at 5 30. Send me your picture, uh, you know, so I can make a flyer. Only one person sent me. So, what I'm going to do, I ain't going to freak out. I'm just going to, tonight, after this show, I'll start reposting, looking for contestants for next week. Okay. So, yeah. So, I will do that today and I'll get that done. Okay. There you go. There you go. So that so, was our show, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, I am going to be doing and making some appearances. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of we're going to start. I'm talking about guys next week, and we're going to start announcing where we're going to be. Because I'm just going to be at places promoting my show, you know, and promoting this show as well. Because I have my own show, you know, Chef coming out in April. Oh, is that right? Right, on April 26th. Uh, I don't know the date. That's not true. So I know it's sometime in April. I don't know the exactly what they're going to tell me. Um, hold on. So in, so we're in February. Okay, so March, I'll be at the Abilities Expo here in Los Angeles, March 4th or the 6th. Uh, I will be doing um, some interviews yeah, there, yeah. engaging with yeah. folks. I'm going to climb that fucking uh, uh, big ass big rock ass wall. I'm trying to get you to come and climb it with me. I'm going to have a camera guy out there. So even if we're both out there or just me, I'm still going to have a camera guy. I don't think I'm going to have a sound guy, but I might. I don't know. But I definitely have a camera guy. Uh, and then on the 14th, I'll be I'll at the be Assistive, assistive Tech, Expo Tech Expo at CSUN. Yes. 
So that's where all of the latest technology related to the disabled community is unveiled and you kind of see where they are in the process. And I'm going to get to learn about all these new different products. I got our press passes today uh, at the Fire Show. Um, so if you want to go, we got a press pass. And that's in the end of March. Now, just last just night, night, I received an I received invitation, invitation to consider to going down to Mexico, Mexico during that during same, same week. week. The U.S. US and, uh, and, uh, World, uh, soccer, soccer team, team is in the, is qualifying, the qualifying matches match of, of the World Cup, World Cup for, the, for, the, for, for the Summer the Olympics summer or whatever. Or whatever. So they have so to play have to this like this qualifying round, round down in yeah. like oh, 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 Mexico oh, somewhere. Oh, so I don't know. And the guy said, "Hey man, well we got our team. We're going to be down here for a week. For a, week. a lot of teams from South America, uh, France, all the countries. They all got to come to Mexico to qualify to be in the in the Olympics." Okay. So they said, well, why don't you come on down for that week and hang out? And I'm like, oh, shit, I like that, man. It's not that expensive either. It's not that expensive. So I'm kind of working it and seeing if that'll happen. If I have that opportunity, I won't go to the CSUN thing, and I'll just go to Mexico. So, But I am going to be making these personal appearances, guys. Uh, I like going out and engaging. In April, I'll be in New York for um, National Limb Awareness Month. Myself and someone very cool will be announcing stuff in April. Yeah, in April. So I might go to New York to make those announcements. And while I'm on the East Coast, I may see Team Plum. So I may go down to Georgia and do a little bit, bit of business. I'm going to do some stuff in Atlanta. I'm setting it up now. And you'll have an opportunity to come out and see me speak and interact with me one on So, you know, we're going to be picking up these podcasts and I'm going to give this thing some legs. And I believe I'm going to be in the streets and meeting people and shaking hands. So I'm going to invite people. Hey man, if hey, I'm in your town, come on out and check me out. So, so I've met so many so wonderful people, people across the country that way. When I'm across country last spring, I met so many people. Wherever I'd stop, you know, I'd just get on Facebook. Hey, I'm coming here and I'll be there in two hours. Me and my son and, and I dog, and people would show, hey man, what's happening? Ain't nothing much cool. I met this rest stop. Come on, stop and see us. We'll be here for two hours. Hey man, good to see you. I saw you on Facebook. So we're going to be doing that, and I'll be doing it solo. I'm not going to take my child with me this time. When I go to Thailand, I'll probably take her away. There you go. Okay, so that's what I got coming up, and I'll be adding dates to the calendar as we go. Um, we got some great opportunities, I think, coming up for us, sister. All right. Sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. All, right. All right. So we're at so our hour right. mark. We did it again. Yay. Yay. We'll see y'all uh, uh, next, next Wednesday for our, our final show, show of Black History, History, History Month, where we will be playing and, playing and we'll be and talking talk about, about famous, famous Black amputees in history. In history. Or, or no, or not just amputees. amputees. I think it's disabled. Yeah, we're doing disabled because there weren't enough amputees that I that I up on. So, okay. Chef, you do a couple, and I'll come up to the table with a couple, and then I'll have some questions for people to see Tessa Trevor and I, and we'll just have that on. All right, sounds like a plan, brother. All right, all right, guys. Thank you for joining us. See y'all next week. Peace. Bye, everyone.